Sergio writes, hello, Collider Movie Talk. I love the show. Watch it every day from Spain. My email is, a more, is more a recommendation than a question. I often had a discussion with my friends about CGI versus practical effects, especially after watching Mad Max Fury Road. I usually defend CGI, and I think people tend to use only examples of bad CGI and forget when it is actually good. I think you guys have talked about that a few times. There's an excellent video I found on YouTube all about this. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for your work. You guys are awesome. Awesome. Yeah, um, he's making a reference. It's funny because uh, about 24 hours ago, I started to get just flooded with people on Twitter telling me, John, you got to see this video. You got to see this video. And Dennis, who did you say was that made that video? Freddie Wong. Freddie Wong. Wong. Yeah, jump. yeah. And it's it's fascinating. It's about a five, six minute long video. And it's absolutely fascinating looking at CGI. And it makes the premise of it is simply this. You know, CGI is awesome. It's very popular these days just go oh too much cgi just go back to practical effects those make everything better no it does not and you know a lot of people are, are talking about the new star wars and jj abrams saying oh jj's i bring you back in the era of practical it's gonna be all practical effects you know what 90 percent of that movie is going to be digital effects mm -hmm. and they're going to use some practical effects where they will work better but don't make no mistake. And the cool thing in this video too is a lot of people point out the george miller uh mad max movie that's out right now or was out, I should say. I wish I could go back to theater and watch it again. <laughs> um, and say, see, practical effects, all practical. No, there's a lot more digital mm -hmm. effects in that movie than you think. It is a great, so Wendy or Dennis, when we do up the show notes today, let's put a link in the show notes to that video. Uh, so you guys just look in the show notes to this video. If you want to find this video we're talking about, I think it's called something along the lines of CGI is ruining movies, except it doesn't. Right. Uh, it's very cool. And they go a little bit, like I said, it's only five or six minutes long, but they also go a little bit into the background of, you know what you know visual effects companies are going through right now right. it's a really cool six minutes it's crazy how much they packed into it actually so i would recommend checking out you watch the video what did you think i loved it and i loved uh the examples that he used visually while he was talking about and underpinning what he was talking about right visually showing i mean a lot of people forget that the best special effects are the invisible special effects so every tv show that you see about lawyers every time they're walking across the street i bet you a dollar that's from uh, RoboCop. Um, <laughs> remember, guys, I screwed up yesterday. I knew, I knew it was RoboCop. I said Total Recall. Thank all 1,000 of you for correcting me. Um, <clears throat> had a little mind blank, but thank you all 6,000 people. Are like, it's, it's Total Recall. It's RoboCop. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> remember, when somebody's crossing a street, most of the time it's a green screen because it costs less money for someone to just like, oh, dude, just walk across the street or like go get that coffee or have that little se sequence outside. We've already shot all these scenes, these background plates. So it costs less money for them to shoot a person against green screen and just composite it with our technology that we have now than to go outside and have get a, a whole city unit. permit, shut down a street, do all that totally. kind of stuff. Yeah. And so hire people, all the extras. Yeah, yeah. Hire, so remember that when, you, when you're watching any TV show now, when they go outside, look for these little telltale signs. If the camera's a lockdown shot and does a little slight move or something, I guarantee you it's green screen. And those are the invisible effects that you're seeing all the time. I loved also that they got into how all cars and textures mm -hmm. and anything that's not human can be so easily replicated nowadays. I mean, they were, they were cutting away to stuff that I was like, I would guarantee you when I was watching the movie, I was like, I thought that was real. Mm -hmm. Like you're like, oh my God, I just saw all those cars are fake. It's just that one car that's real. It's literally fantastic what we can do now with CGI, but also the greatest part of using practical effects is the blending of the two. Like yes. in Mad Max, yes. you're using multiple plates and you're shooting all those things. And those all started in the early 90s where they were shooting crowd scenes and replicating those crowd scenes. Uh, Lucasfilm was doing that to like, you know, to replicate a large group of people. You'd be like, you guys walk over here, then shoot it again over here. So they're doing like very primitive style things that now like Peter Jackson's, uh, what is that one? Uh, what is that? It's King like, Kong. It's uh, but the it's frighteners. No, it's the 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 CGI thing where all the people can run. It's got a certain uh, when do you get super nerds? I I know massive. massive yes. Thank you. It's called you massive. You said super nerds. And Dennis, I, like, Dennis is like yeah, massive. massive. <laughs> yeah, it's this uh, program called Massive. We're gonna have like a six thousand people running against another six thousand people all fighting and stuff. It's this programming that we can take advantage of now that helps make these massive battle sequences so epic and not cost like four hundred million dollars. So I I think the blending of the two is great. And yeah, people are. It's really easy to complain about bad CGI. Like the great example that he shows is from the Scorpion King, The Rock. Oh. But yeah. that was because those all the people who were doing the effects were up against the wall. They were like, the movie has to come out next week. So they had to release the film 
with it not being finished. That was an unrendered shot. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what happened around that time? No. When they were finishing that film? Do you remember the huge East Coast blackout that lasted days? No. Was oh, it right yeah. around the same oh, you, time? Yeah, like the entire, yeah, I was yeah, living yeah, on the yeah. East Coast. So they was like for three days, like the entire East Coast was without power. And that was right around the time when ILM, because I have a buddy of mine who worked at uh, Lucasfilm. There's like, this has screwed everybody mm -hmm. up and they were talking wow. about it. Was it was storm yeah. related, wasn't it? Yes. I, well, yeah, I think a storm knocked one out, one power generator out and one thing that caused this massive chain reaction. Whereas like then me and Hamilton, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Our power went out too. I mean, it was just it, we lived in dark days for like two or three days. Right, in New York. I remember reading about it. I totally had electricity here in L.A. <laughs> totally enjoying everyone else's holding it in my hand. Yeah, I was like, oh, what's going on? Like, mm, using electronics and stuff. But I think people were like having candlelight friendship hours or something. Friendship I was like, hours. let's all hang out. You're my neighbor. That kind of stuff. That's pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, you, what stood out to you in the video? Yeah, I loved the video. I thought it was great. I mean, like most arguments, I liked that this that this video kind of played the nuances. It's not a black and white situation mm. with CG versus practical. Um, and I think like makeup, you know, it, it, you should use sparingly. Use use it to enhance <laughs> your features. Not don't wear too much of it. Um, but uh, and also while you were talking, Schnepp, you, it reminded me of um, that story that I don't know if it's even true, but the story of uh, shooting Gangs of New York and uh, George Lucas coming down to visit the set and being like, you know, you can just CG all of these people. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Scorsese is like, get off my yeah, set, exactly. Lucas. Right? Scorsese is like, I know. <laughs> thank you. Um, but anyway, the point that I'm making is, yeah, I think I think you. You know, when used in the right ways and used to complement things, it's absolutely an asset. The thing I wanted to point out was um, towards the end of the video, you know, the uh, the narrator makes the comment um, that, you know, maybe if CG is taking you out of a movie, the movie's not that good in the first place if right. you're so easily distracted. And while I think that's mostly a good point, as a horror fan especially, I was just thinking about how recently, you know, I'll be sitting and watching a movie I hate to say this because I know it's really divisive, but I love Mama, um, and Mama just took me out of it every single, like she just did not look right to me. And I know there was real puppetry used, I know there's a real actor who played Mama, but for some reason, just every time her hair would like blow in the breeze, I was like, this looks so stupid. <laughs> and I'm really loving this movie. So I just think that, you know, it's a complicated issue. There isn't a one size fits all answer to it. But yeah, if they can, if the companies and the practical can all come together and sort of work together, I think that's when it works best.